In this step, we're going to work on dropping the ball. As you recall, we have three variables. We're able to pick up and drop the ball with the mouse up and mouse down. Pick up hasn't changed any. Drop hasn't changed any. We're just going to add a few lines of code in this step. What's critical here, the reason that we have a start game that is triggered the first time we click on the ball is so that the ball doesn't just automatically fall when, it's, when you don't do anything with it at the beginning of the game. If you don't do that and you set the ball to fall, if it's not being held by the mouse, it will drop off the stage automatically. So that's why the start game um, option is in here. Now we want the ball to drop here. Um, currently we are using, we're checking to see if y is less than 280, which is right about here, right inside the top of the buckets, just so the ball is out of sight. If this is the case, we increase the y, because if you remember, y is 0, 0 is in the top left-hand corner, so by increasing y, it moves down. With the x variable, with the x coordinate, we're having it plus equal to my rand. It's going to fall a little to the right, because right now we don't have a random number. It's going to move just by one, so it will slowly forward, fall towards the right. So if we test this, we can pick up the ball. I'm going to drop it here and I'll show you we can pick it up again. That's how far it'll drop, just below the bucket level, because if I let it continue falling, you'd see it down here past the bucket. And I can drop it into pretty much any of the buckets, but notice I can also drop it between them. I don't have any way of preventing that, and I'm not really worried about it at this point. If you drop it straight down, it's not going to go where you're intending, so you want to actually be a little bit off of the bucket. So that's where, how it works at this point. Get that working, and then we'll start detecting a hit, and we will add scores.